Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is a beautiful 14th September 2020. Coming up on the Krusty Canuck podcast, the $221 million favorite fund, more liberal censorship BS from the Heritage Minister, and how Miss Haydu and Dr. Tam knew about the beer bug way back in December of 19. Stick around. Sweetheart. Because I am hard, you will not like me. Yes, sir. There is no racial bigotry here. Here you are all equally working. Christy Neck Podcast is brought to you by the fine people at Rampage Coffee Company. Strong, rich, and smooth. And the fine gentleman at canongold.com. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, 14th September 2020. In recent news, Justin Trudeau, Mr. Potato Head, Sock Puppet, Sock Boy, all around great guy, all of a sudden put together a program to help black entrepreneurs out to the tune of $221 million. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, another $221 million going to favorites. Now, I'm not going to sit here and try to dissect everything. I know the racial tension out there is very sensitive, but I'll say again. I was not raised in a racist household. I was told to treat people with respect and courtesy. And just like Martin Luther King said back in the 1960s, you judge people based on their character. And he was right. I was raised with that ethic. A lot of my friends were raised with that ethic. And mostly everybody that I know in my circle today has that simple ethic. Too bad our government doesn't. Right? We've had this issue now with uh, the pandemic since the better part of February, March of this recent year. Um, there's people that were in charge that have made some terrible decisions, like Dr. Haydu, and not Dr. Haydu, fuck, well, 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 no, Ms. Haydu, Miss Graphic Designer, who happens to be a health minister who might have a little background in anthropology, and Dr. Tam, a lady who has never practiced medicine for the better part of 10 years, weighed in on her expertise. And uh, it's, it's turned to a real shit show. So here we are in this country, ladies and gentlemen, where our economics has gone to crap because government keeps spending. Businesses have gone tits up, pardon the expression. And uh, we have leadership that doesn't want to do anything about it, except when it comes to the BLM idea, when it comes to the racial idea and the so-called marginalized idea. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not going to sit here and uh, make you suck eggs. We've all seen the news. We've all seen the media of what's going on south of us, especially to our, uh, some of our good friends down in the United States. And it's a shit show. It's a shit show. All right? Anyway, I'll leave links in the description uh, in regards to this uh, whole uh, predicament. Justin Trudeau came up last Wednesday and said, uh, okay, I'm going to set together this program, $221 million to help black entrepreneurs out uh, because of marginalization, because of inequality and systemic racism and all that stuff. And yet I will remind my listeners and viewers alike out there, when you look at our parliamentary system, is it all 100% white? No. You look at our provincial systems, whether it be the legislature or provincial parliaments alike, are all the constituents and members of said parliaments white? No. Are all the staff members and stewards and servers alike, are they all white? No. There is quite the mix. There is quite the diverse element in our parliament today. And I would say it's more so now than what it has been in the past 30 to 40 years. Okay? And yet... There are businesses in this country, especially in Western Canada, that have gone tits up, belly up because of this, this whole beer bug issue. There are people that have lost their jobs, people who have lost their way, people who have relied on the CERB and SEBA payments to get ahead, to get things done. And now, of course, our beloved leader, just before the throne speech, announces this special handout. My question is, where's the handout to the First Nations? Where's the handout to other businesses that went belly up? Okay. Again, we don't have clean water in this country because of a handful of politicians think they're saving the environment by charging us more tax and then turning around dumping raw sewage in our waterways. Right. 
So why are you investing $221 million in one group of people when there are many other groups of people in this country? Okay. You've got European descendants. You've got Jamaican descendants. You've got other descendants, uh, Eastern Indian, uh, Asian descendants who are struggling to get ahead too. Right? Who are struggling rightfully to get ahead. And not just because of of uh, the pandemic, because of business decisions, because of taxes, and just because the way the economy is going. And yet you, Trudeau, and your clowns and your cronies, oh, okay, we have to fight this by this way. Okay, again, you're ghost hunting and you're wasting taxpayer dollars. Why is there not a universal incentive to help all business owners? Okay? Does someone have to be black from this country? Does someone have to be black from that country? Does someone have to be five foot two and marginalized to receive any kind of special treatment? Well, I guess so, because there's preferential treatment going around. You sit there and talk about systemic racism and all this other bullshit when it comes to prejudice, and yet you blatantly prejudice other Canadians. I'm not condemning anybody who wants to run a business in this country. By all means. And if there's government incentive out there to help people, then you help all people. All people. All colors, all creeds, all gender identities, all thoughts, all religions. Not just for one group over the next. What a contradiction. Anyway, tell me what you think, ladies and gentlemen. CrustyBCanuck67 at gmail.com. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook, under the same name, on Twitter, and you can also find me at uh, Canund. You can find me at Parler. And you can also find me on a new uh, website, that's, or not website, a new social platform that's coming up. It's called Wimkin. I'll leave all the links in the description, and I'll leave the links to uh, uh, the stories about these handouts. Just, it, it's an abomination, ladies and gentlemen. And what, what, what I get, though, is that I actually received a warning from somebody, uh, a good friend of mine. She was considerate. She was kind and polite. And she sent me an email she says, I know you're working on a podcast in regards to this handout and regards to this incentive. And she says, be careful because of racial backlash. And I told her, you know me better than that. So I'm doing it anyway. It's freedom of speech, freedom of thought, freedom of association, freedom of expression. It's not racist to sit there and criticize the government's decision when it comes to playing favorites. That's everyone's God-given right, regardless of uh, what color you are, regardless of how tall you are or what gender you are or what uh, identity you have it's everyone's right and we're we're forgetting that which is bringing me to my next point ladies and gentlemen the whole internet censorship thing yeah mr uh stephen gobert you know mr fucking heritage minister is weighing in on that fucking issue too in regards to what can go online and what can go online and i brought this up in one of my episodes before uh off the top of my head i can't forget what episode there ladies and gentlemen but still it's turning into another conglomerate on how we have to, what we can say, what we can't say. And I'll leave links in the description to back the story up. Uh, to make a long story short, he is basically trying to get bigger tech companies, i.e. Facebook, uh, Google, all these other big wigs, to consider you know, phasing out the hate speech and all this stuff. Now, honestly, who in their right mind is going to go online and constantly spew racial hatred or blatant sexism, blatant misogyny in the actual meaning of the words. I haven't come across any websites yet, personally, that promote rampant sexism or rampant racism or rampant hatred towards any color or creed. I know there's racial sites out there, trust me. I've actually had some links handed to me there a while ago. In regards to some of these shitheads going around talking about purity and all that other garbage. What a fucking nightmare. Those clowns I just delete. Like I say, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not a racist, I'm not a bigot, I'm not a sexist or misogynist or a transphobe or a homophobe. I'm just a guy speaking his mind. And I believe in fairness and I believe in equality. But I also believe in meritocracy. I believe in earning something. You mean, you know, actually, you know, getting up, going to work. Or going to class, studying, working, labor, going above and beyond whenever you can 
doing the best you can with what you got to progress yourself. Yet we have government officials in this country who don't see it that way. They want more carbon tax. They'll take it out of your pay. They want more of this. They'll take it out of your pay. Huh? They want you to pay at the pumps. They want you to pay when home heating. Right? Pay a few extra bucks every goddamn week when you work a few extra hours just to cover their asses for the ridiculous fucking spending. Oh, and then they come up with these big plans in regards to our health. Oh, okay, well, if you don't comply to our rules, we're going to give you a ticket or we're going to fine you. We're going to charge you. Right? And now you got some of these powers that be that want to fuck with the way we talk online or how we speak or what we do. Is that democracy in action, ladies and gentlemen? Or is it borderline fucking tyranny? totalitarianism what's that smell it smells like socialism and if you heard my last episode where i had that beautiful uh, interview with Susanna there she can verify that for you and hey i'll tell me what you think crustybcanuck67 at gmail.com and or you can find me on wimkin you can find me in parlay on twitter on the facebook instagram or just send me an email you know I'll even enclose my uh, writing address, too. So if you want to send me a nice handwritten letter or send me some cards or some swagger, whatever. And if you do feel like donating, ladies and gentlemen, please consider donating. I'll leave links in the description, too. You can find me on Instagram, on Subscribestar. Uh, please uh, donate if you can. Um, do what you can. I'm not expecting oodles and oodles of cash. But if you feel like donating, please do. If not, that's fine, too. I want to keep this podcast up and running for people that can't afford it and not afford it alike. So, hey, equal opportunity right here. And, hey, ladies and gentlemen, uh, carrying on with the whole uh, issue on favoritism. Uh, it's also been brought to my attention, too, that Miss Haydu and Dr. Tam knew exactly what was going on uh, when it came to the uh, said beer bug back in December. You know, even before she was appointed, any kind of ministerial uh, duties... Her and Dr. Tam knew exactly what was going on in December. And I'll leave a link from CTV News in regards to that there in the description. Um, I'm not going to read it verbatim. But uh, roughly at the 13-minute mark till the 26-minute mark in said video, um, you can see her basically just treat it like it was no big deal. Oh, we knew. We knew, but we didn't do anything. It just goes to prove how much lackluster politics is really going on still, ladies and gentlemen. They keep proving themselves to be insufficient morons and uh, they don't really give a shit about us and our money anyway here's a word from my sponsors rampage coffee company extremely delicious coffee roasted with purpose then delivered to your favorite mug our delicious coffee comes packed with enough attitude to punch you out of your morning slippers here at rampage coffee company we provide you superior quality coffee that is delivered to the doorsteps of any canadian who is ready to take their coffee game to the next level. We hand select quality beans to be a small batch roasted by our head roaster, which ensures unparalleled attention to details and amazing quality in all our coffee. Cheers to a freshly roasted kick-ass coffee. Rampage Coffee Company. Use the code Krusty Canuck to get free shipping on the Rampage Sampler. This is Brian Boucher, the new CEO of Canad Gold Corp. We have gold at 99% purity with discounts ranging from $100 up to $200 off the ounce. This is the right place to buy from two gram cards to 400 ounce bricks. We have any quantity of gold you are looking for. We also sell by the ton, not like your ex-wife. Visit us today at canadgold.com, C-A-N-U-N-D gold.com. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Talk out uh, Scott and Brian there at canungold.com and the fine people at Rampage Coffee Company. Young couple out of Saskatoon starting up their own coffee conglomerate. And I've actually tried some of it. It's really delicious. Anyway, carrying on with more of this favoritism and BS when it comes to our liberal government. So what I'm thinking, what I'm calculating is the fact that we got a big throne speech coming up here in Canada. Come the 23rd, you know, Prime Minister has prorogued Parliament. That's a fancy way of saying I'm stalling. Right When it comes to proroguing, basically stalling, we're going to shut down actual government office because we just can't take responsibility for our shit. Right? And uh, we'll see. You know, Governor General's already been in shit because of her uh, lavish demands and her lavish spending and treating her staff like crap. 
course, Trudeau has been under the microscope now for the better part of two years with SNC Lavalin, his lack of action, uh, his lack of consideration for seniors and vets, and of course, the big wee scandal. And oh my goodness, heaven forbid, the wee charity is not going to operate in Canada anymore. Aw, poor guys. You have to get rid of $50 million worth of real estate assets. Yeah, who gives a shit, right? Maybe you fucking clowns should have been a little more honest with your business practices. That way you wouldn't have had your peepees slapped, right? And embarrassed. See, I'm all for helping people out. I'm all for fucking looking after clean water. But what programs was we doing to help Canadian kids? What was we doing to help the First Nations water crisis? What was the We Charity doing for kids that have trouble reading, trouble getting along? How about the kids in our country that go to school every fucking day that are hungry? Okay? What were they doing? No, let's help a few kids in Ecuador. Let's help a few kids in Kenya. Let's help a few kids in Ethiopia. Fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Right? But don't be sitting there crying on national television they get to shut down your operations in Canada because what have you operated in Canada other than real estate deals, and trying to scam close to a billion dollars from the Canadian taxpayer. And then play the whole, oh, we didn't know, bullshit. Hell of a lot smarter than that. Right? And that's what gets me to this. A lot of these politicians are hell of a lot smarter than they act, and they think we're dumb. Okay? So, my advice, ladies and gentlemen, I can't stress this enough, is that Come to throne speech on the 23rd of September. My wife and I were going to be glued to the set to try to absorb and listen to all the regurgitated bullshit that our prime minister and our half-assed governor general is going to try to promote. Obviously, there's probably going to be another carbon tax slapped onto another carbon tax, right? In the name of the environment, right? And what gets me still is that when they suggested the carbon tax, what plan was put together? to help us not rely on fossil fuels? Were they creating some kind of biodiesel machine that's going to help us burn less fuel and yet still get efficiency? Were they going to create some kind of solar energy enhancer that's going to grab the power of the sun like in some fucking comic book? Right? When you look at wind turbines, how much lubrication do they take? Do they need to keep the turbines going? Right? How many raw materials are made and processed to keep those, you know, wind generators up doesn't take much research to figure out it's a goddamn con ladies and gentlemen now personally would i like to see fossil fuels be phased out not entirely there are ways we can burn things to be clean and efficient there are ways we can you know recycle other materials to be a little more efficient right but this whole overnight fucking cavalcade parade they call the carbon tax And this goddamn tomfoolery they call saving the fucking world. Well, what do they know about saving the world? They can't tell the Canadian people the truth. They'd rather spend money on on foreign interest and so-called saving the world rather than saving their own. So I don't trust their judgment when it comes to environmental uh, uh, sovereigns or environmental uh, integrity. Right? I, I think we're pretty smart up here in the great, uh, great North in regards to looking after ourselves and looking after our resources. It's just we're, we're putting too many people in charge that think they know what they're doing when they don't. Too many unqualified people calling the shots and too many goddamn fucking power grabbers. Too many victims. Too many people that think they're owed magical things just because they identify or because they represent something. And yet I have yet to see a politician in this government actually get up and fucking do something based on merit rather than, well, here, here's a position. Do your best. All right. Tell me what you think. CrustyBCanuck67 at gmail.com. Or you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Parlay, and the new Wimkin, and Canund.com too. Uh, That's another social media website that does not believe in censorship and all that other good stuff that the bigger tech companies are trying to promote. Anyway, you decide, folks. What else can I say about it? You know, the whole liberal cabinet is a joke. It is. It is. You know, from from everyone complaining about how, oh, so-and-so said this to me and -and so-and-so put this nasty word in my office to someone being put on the spot, to someone being caught with their hand in the cookie jar like Mr. Morneau. 
and some other liberal MPs that have been charged recently, and I'll leave links in the description too, uh, for fraud and for gambling, right? They also had a big Integrity March rally uh, on the 12th there in Ottawa. And it's funny how the mainstream media promoted it as just a few hundred people, and yet there was roughly about 5,000 people there telling the government to smart up, you know, to get a goddamn grip and stop treating gun owners in this country like criminals. And yet, since their so-called OIC mandate of banning all these guns, honestly, ask yourself, listeners out there, how many gun crimes have gone on the rise since that? And how many of those individuals that have been apprehended by the authorities actually own an actual gun license? Think about that, right? I've done numerous episodes on gun control in this country, and I've put up articles from Brampton, from Toronto, from Montreal, to people that were apprehended for having a firearm, and yet they had no proof that they were allowed to own it legally, right? Something to think about, isn't it? Yeah. Of course, I guess we're gearing towards that so-called socialist utopia that Justin Trudeau wants, right? It's okay for him to have it because he was born with a fucking spoon in his face. He was spoon-fed all his goddamn life. He doesn't know anything about getting out and working for a living, right? And again, to all those commie kids that have weighed in on my Facebook page and said all these wonderful things about... <clears throat> privilege and we're standing up the working class well firstly you have to get up and get your own privilege you have to get up and work for yourself and you have to save your money for a rainy fucking day and stop worrying about other people's money that's a start unfortunately we have a government that doesn't want to do that so i'll be curious to see what's going to happen on the 23rd of september I hope there is a non-confidence vote, ladies and gentlemen. I really fucking do. I hope there's a non-confidence. I hope that the powers that be in Parliament say, okay, we're not impressed with your shit. You're done, buds. Time to go. Call an election. Now, financially speaking, that wouldn't be right. But the only thing I can think of other than that is uh, people start throwing bricks in major cities in this country, start damaging property, just like our friends to the south. But then again, what kind of example would that be? Right. I don't want to see violence in the streets. I don't want to see chaos and carnage. I don't want to see little districts set up and given fancy names like Chaz or Chop or Choppy or Boppy, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Right. I want to see us get along again. I want to see Canadians flourish. I want to see Canada progress like it used to. And it, it shouldn't matter who's in Parliament. There should be that innate ability for people to get up and fucking go to work and do the best they can to save their fucking money. And try to get ahead. But the past five years, and especially this past 18 months, it has been harder and harder for Canadians to do it. And why? Without relying on some kind of government program to help the so-called, quote-unquote, marginalized or racialized. I can tell you this right now, ladies and gentlemen, the average Canadian is not going to go up to anybody and say something rotten or derogatory to them because of their color or because of their gender. A lot of this is just ghost hunting and gaslighting and speculation and trying to gain votes and try to win votes and try to be the nice guy. In order to be the nice guy, they're assholes. You've actually got to be nice to people. And taking their money and lying, that's not being nice. That's just being a dick. Right? It, it, it's fucking terrible. How else do I explain it? we got to keep playing the favorites game, favorites game, favorites game over and over again. And for what? Right? Like I said before, I am not trying to disenfranchise anybody who wants to start a business country or has a hard time getting their business up and running. Technically speaking, I'm trying to start a business with this podcast, reaching out to people. Right? I'm not asking for a government handout. I'll ask you guys to donate, but that's up to you. Am I going to lose any sleep because I can't get a $10 or a $5 donation? No. I'll ask politely. Right? If you want to donate, you can. Am I going to ask for government money to help me out? Nope. I'm doing this independently because I believe in free enterprise. I believe in prosperity. I believe in capitalism. Right? And for you kids out there that think capitalism is bad, think about what's putting you through school right now. Then you might change your tune. Right? 
<coughs> you might change your tune once reality slaps you in the fucking face and realize, oh shit, I have to go out and work for a living. But then again, there's certain powers that be that are preventing us from going out working for a living because all these businesses are closing. Certain employers are not hiring because they just don't have the work or the tenders to go to work because no one's hiring them either. All because of what? Because of regulation, taxes, and the fear. The fear of this pandemic. The fear that our powers that be keep instilling in us. And the division they keep creating. And of course the division that the mainstream media just can't get enough of. To thwart our so-called little minds, right? To create more useful idiots for what? I'm not an idiot. I'm useful, but I'm not a fucking idiot. And neither are you, ladies and gentlemen. You're not idiots. You all work. You all raise your families. You all mind your business. You all play your sports. You all do what the fuck you want to do. Why? Because we're supposed to be living in a country or countries that promote democracy. And yet we can't find it anymore. Why? I think the former that I just mentioned proves it. I think we have to start looking at who we put in charge. Put them on the spot. Ask them the tough questions. If they get uncomfortable, too fucking bad. If they get uncomfortable over simple questions, then they have no idea what discomfort really fucking is. I know you interested you guys out there who I served with and my American friends and my British friends are like, we all know what discomfort is. Too bad these clowns don't. Maybe if they did, they'd understand what they have to do in their positions. A little bit of humility goes a long way, ladies and gentlemen. Let's keep that in mind come the 23rd of fucking September. Right? If they do call an election. If they do decide to change powers, then it's going to be some hard times, let's say, if it goes to the conservative government. If they don't, call an election it's going to be a hard time for the next couple of years until the actual election comes around I don't know you know less of two evils lesser of two evils I don't know but I think to be more responsibility the opposition gets in and I think it might open up the spectrum one more fucking time so people can see the world and see this country for what it is like I say I keep loving this I, I love this land ladies and gentlemen I love Canada I, I love the First Nations I love the Asian Canadians. I love the black Canadians. I love brown Canadians, pink, purple Canadians. I don't care if you're Christian. I don't care if you're Jewish. I don't care if you're Muslim. I love this country, and this country is worth fighting for. Period. It is. And uh, it's getting scary, but I I, I, I don't want to see undue violence in the streets. I don't want to see nasty fucking riots and cars being burnt and cops being shot and people being gunned down and dragged around because of a political opinion. Anyhow, that's all I got for today, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, whew, I get a little emotional. Mm. Anyhow, like I said, I have been Krusty Canuck on this beautiful 14th of uh, September, 2020. So let's keep in mind, come the 23rd of September, what's going to happen. And uh, bear in mind, too, I also have another live stream coming up uh, this coming Thursday, uh, on the 17th, 8 o'clock Mountain Standard Time. So if you want to come by and say hi, please do. If you feel like donating, please do. That's a good thing, too. And let's have a talk. Let's have a discussion about uh, life in this country and in North America as we see it. So as I always say, ladies and gentlemen, remember, uh, take care of your friends and your loved ones. Do the best you can with what you got. Let's keep our heads up, keep our chin ups, you know, the old British adage. And it's the old Canadian adage, too. And uh, let's filter through this shit. And let's hope we can find some brighter days. And as I always say, remember, humanity and merit wins the day. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Sweetheart. Because I am hard, you will not like me. There is no racial bigotry here.